Good evening everyone and welcome once again to Compline. We will begin on page 9 of the booklet as usual and I will be using tonight Abide by Macrina Vedica and the section that I will be using links into Psalm 148 so if you wish to grab a Bible so that you can see that uh, mine will be the New International Version, but um, just so you can see it, then please do. It will begin on page nine. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. So. Psalm 148 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nature, nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children. Let, us, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendour is above the earth and the heavens, and he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. So this section in Abide by Macrina Vedica, who is a nun and lives in a Benedictine monastery in Arkansas. It's called the power of creation. All things praise God simply by being themselves. This magnificent hymn of praise gives witness to the truth of these words. In ordinary moments of daily life, when prayer and praise seem far for your lips, consider memorising this psalm. Notice that the psalmist asks the moon, sun and stars to praise the Lord. The mountains and hills, the snow and mist, the fire and hail, all are asked to praise God without ever speaking a word. From the heavens and from the earth, praise is to ring forth. They are all drawn to the divine in wordless love. If the fruit trees, the cedars and even the hail are to give praise, then it follows that there is a way of praising God in which the spoken word is unnecessary. There is a word that differs from the spoken kind. Sometimes it flows forth in the simple silence of being, as shown in the mountains and the hills. There is a word that leaps up in the crackling of the fire. It rides on in the moaning of the wind and in the roar of the wild beast. Could this too be praised? Could all of creation be drawn like a magnet to the divine? Perhaps we who depend so much on words that are spoken and written need to discover the art of praising God in the silent cathedral of our beings. We can learn from nature the art of praising God without words. I have noticed that when I spend more time with nature, I find it easier to praise God in this profoundly simple way. 
Creation itself is a sacred text through which the presence of God is revealed to us. That was written by Christine Walters Paintner. Those two lines. The earth keeps drawing me into greater awareness. Each new awareness increases my gratitude. The prayer of gratitude needs no words, only a heart open to what simply is. I arose one morning, went outside to praise God, and lo, everything was already offering praise. The God of the heavens and the earth was being blessed in the beautiful prayer of dawn. The fresh, crisp, crisp smell of autumn moving over into winter was a prayer of praise. Even leftover sprigs of green grass were pr praying their way out of the brown crumbling leaves that have fallen to the ground. The sun writing its golden name in the skies was a prayer of praise. I looked around and behold, everything was praising God through the simple act of being. The carpet of needles in the pine grove, the geese honking their way through the skies, the arms of the oak tree stretched out in a beautiful welcoming gesture, crumpled and brown leaves returning to the earth, feathers dropped by the Canada geese as they grazed for grass seeds, the squirrels gathering their nuts for winter, the pathways through the monastery park, the labyrinth with one soul walker. Everything in its own way was praising the creator of heaven and earth. And thus it became clear to me, we need only to be attentive to enter nature's contemplative prayer of praise. All this prayer and, and praise taking place in the midst of the hundred places of daily life reminds me of my need to surrender some of my action. Learning to put down my tools of work becomes a blessing. Each of us needs to practice the art of being as opposed to doing. Go outside, stand beside something that is already praising God. Let the sacredness of that prayer seep into your being. All that is drawn to God is drawing you with it. Let your great efforts fall away. Allow your little longings to rise. Keep company with the things of earth that pray without words. Look around you. There are prayers of praise everywhere. Be with the prayer you see. When you return to your work, you may be surprised to discover that some of this praise has slipped into your soul, making it possible for you to continue your work accompanied by a new song in the ground of your being. At the end of Psalm 148, the kings of the earth, indeed all the peoples of the earth, high and low, young and old, are summoned to give praise to the holy name of God. What might happen if the rulers of all nations would take seriously this request? What if at the beginning of each new day our rulers paid attention to the natural praise of the universe and allowed that prayer of praise to take root in their souls? With your mind's eye, try to envisage, envisage, envision the leaders and peoples of all nations standing, praising God amid the rocks and hills, the thorns and the blossoms, the desert sands and the morning star. If we were able to absorb this prayer of praise, could we ever sta again stand in the killing fields of war-torn zones without the realisation that something in our lives and on our planet is terribly out of focus? Yet no matter how out of focus we might be, God has planted in each of our hearts seeds of praise. Perhaps it is time to plant them in our own world and watch them blossom. Amen. Reflection and prayer. What is your understanding of praise? What does it mean to you when we say that all of creation is praising God just by being? How is it possible for you to praise God without words? Practice living with creation for a day. Let this be a day of praising God. Spend time with something in creation. A tree, a rock, a garden, the sky the earth, a blade of grass. Write a prayer or poem honouring the object of your praise. O tree of God, tree of life. In the gift of your shade I stand, my heart raised to your creator. Your branches call out, call me to reach out in all directions to many people. Your branches remind me of the sheltering arms of God. Your roots call me to be rooted in all that is good and nourishing. Your roots ask me to spend time in the ground of my being. Teach me like you to praise God in the silence of my being. Help me to surrender unnecessary words. 
draw me like a magnet into the abiding love of God. And when it is time for me to die, teach me to die gracefully and joyfully. Teach me to let go as you let go of your leaves each autumn. In living and in dying, teach me to praise God by living well and dying well. May it come to pass. Amen. The one thing that immediately comes to mind for me is that outside of our back door, we have a it's a blossom bush, I suppose. I don't know exactly what it is. But at the moment, I opened the back door this morning and I was greeted by this hum of buzzing creatures that was so loud. I was looking around trying to work out where the swarm was. But there wasn't a swarm. It was just the fact that all these bees and wasps and other buzzing creatures were attracted so much to this particular bush with all this blossom. And they're absolutely loving it. They are literally having a seven course banquet with extra champagne in that bush. And once I reassured myself that it wasn't a, a swarm and it wasn't anything to be concerned about, it was actually pretty incredible. That they obviously, I know the birds love it when the tree has berries. They're always on it. But I don't think I'd ever seen other creatures like bees and wasps in there in quite such numbers. It really was quite loud first thing this morning. We come now to our time of prayer. This book is my great friend Julian of Norwich, Enfolded in Love, Daily readings of love, forgiveness and joy. And this is actually one of her most famous quotes. Apart from all will be well. This is also one that appears a lot. And it's called, it's called, he keeps all that is made. He showed me a little thing. The size of a hazelnut in the palm of my hand and it was as round as a ball. I looked at it with my mind's eye and I thought, what can this be? An answer came, it is all that is made. I marvelled that it could last, for I thought it might have crumbled to nothing, it was so small. And the answer came into my mind, it lasts and ever shall because God loves it. And all things have being through the love of God. In this little thing, I saw three truths. The first is that God made it. The second is that God loves it. The third is that God looks after it. What is he indeed that is maker and lover and keeper? I cannot find words to tell. For until I am one with him, I can never have true rest nor peace. I can never know it until I am held so close to him that there is nothing in between. I have discovered that David Wells had collaborated with Raymond Friel on this book, At Your Side, which is all to do with those who want to pray and lead prayer. And this is titled In Praise of Creation. Lord, it is good to be here. On the good earth, our common home. What you made is holy. Praise to you, Lord, for creation. The, for the morning sun, the ripening fruit, the oceans rolling in splendour, the life-giving trees, the animals at play in the wilderness, the glancing shoals of fish, grace-filled, charged with grandeur. Help us to be good dwellers on this earth, to look after what has been entrusted to us from all eternity to live more simply and not to aspire to a lifestyle that cannot be shared by all. Help us to be attentive to what we consume, where it comes from, the impact of its production. Give us the grace to be open to reality, to hear the cries of pain from the sea, 
the shanty towns, the steaming landfills where children pick over toxic waste for a living. Let us be aware of who we are in the scheme of things. Your hands to till and tend the goods of creation, to be shared among everybody, your creatures, grateful for the gift of life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. At this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick and to assure the isolated of our love and your love. For your name's sake. Amen. God, our Father, by whose mercy the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light, we place in your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems and our unfulfilled hopes, knowing that only what you bless will prosper. To your love and protection we commit each other and all those we love, knowing that you alone are our sure defender. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We return to the bottom of page 14 or the top of page 15 for the Lord's Prayer. Please follow and join in with using whichever translation you prefer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen.